Okay, everybody. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to write a class. We discussed this in chapter four, and that's the focus and main point of this chapter. So remember, when you write a class, you have two sections. One is the instance variables, instance data that demonstrates, that shows, or uh, that describes the attributes of an object. And then you have <clears throat> the behaviors, the methods. So we always do the instance data first, okay? And instance data are always, always private because we want to keep that from being viewed or modified by the outside classes. So it's always private. So a rectangle, if you think about it, how do you describe a rectangle? You describe it with uh, width and length, right? That's it. So we have two instance variables, and one is uh, length, which is an int. You can make it a double, but I'm just making it an int because the purpose is really to demonstrate classes, not to go into those details yet. Okay, so uh, we have length and then we have width. This is how you describe a rectangle, and that's enough. Now, another thing, uh, another potential instance variable is this. And some of you may think, hmm, when we talk about rectangle, we talk about the length and width, but we also talk about the area. So is area an instance variable? I think I described this in the lecture notes uh, pretty thoroughly, but I'm going to explain it here also. Okay, area should not be an instance variable. The reason is you can get the area from length and width. Multiply them, you get the area. So we call this type of attribute uh, derived attribute. It's not native, it's not basic, it's derived. That means you can get it from other attributes. So that's why we don't use this as an instance variable because it's derived. And what's the, the disadvantage or, or downsides of having a derived variable? Uh, it's because it will corrupt your object. You can change the area while the length and width are not changed. For example, if your length is two, your width is two, then your area should be four. But if you have a method, set area or change area, you can change it to eight or nine or 10 while your length and width are still two and two. So that corrupts your object, that um, violates the consistency. And so the integrity of the object is violated. That's why we don't want uh, this derived um, instance variable, okay? I'm going to delete it. So that's that. Uh, that's enough, right? Now, to write a class, you will always have a constructor. And what does a constructor do? A constructor will initialize every object to the same equal, um, how do I say it, a state, okay? So a constructor always uh, start with public. It has to be public. Otherwise, other classes cannot see it. So it's public and it doesn't have a return type, right? So it has the same name as a class name. And right now, I will just not accept anything. <clears throat> and so if I don't know what kind of constructor you want to construct, then it's just uh, zero. Okay, so I initialize it to zero. So you can see why we call this a constructor and why we say it initializes all objects of this class to the same state. Because when you create a rectangle object, it's length and width are zeros. So uh, that's why they, they, they all start at the same state. So what does a constructor do? When do you call a constructor? A constructor is called when you uh, create a new object. So while we have only written this one constructor, 
I'm going to start a new class and let's call it the driver. Okay, so I will call it rectangle driver. And the driver is a tester. It tests to uh, see if this class functions correctly. So uh, that's why we call it driver. Okay, a driver always has the main method. So I check that and click. Okay, so now I'm going to delete this because this is auto-generated comments. It doesn't uh, mean anything. I'm just going to test the rectangle class, okay. But when you do your project, you need to do more detailed uh, documentation. I just want to save some time here. So here, okay, test the rectangle class. How do we test it? We first have to create an object. So to create an object, you start with the class name. I will call it R1, okay? And equal sign and new is the keyword you must use and followed by rectangle, right? You remember scanner, scan equals to new scanner. So this is the same. And if you go back to look at our rectangle class, it does not accept any parameters. So here, we will just put empty parameters there. So now we have a, a new rectangle. It's named R1. So what is the length of R1? It's zero. What's the width? It's zero. Now, if I create, <coughs> excuse me, if I create another one, let me just copy this. If I create an R2, okay, and what's the length of R2? Zero. Width? Zero. The reason is when you do this, when you call this rectangle method, it goes to this constructor and it will execute these two statements. Okay, so that's what that is. So now we have created two rectangles, zero and zero, non-existent basically, but we were able to create the, those objects. Okay, let's go back to this rectangle class. Now, another way to do this is to uh, override it, over, overload it and um, you ha we haven't discussed this really much, but it's pretty easy to understand. To overload a constructor, you simply do the same here, right? Except you have different signature, different parameter list. So I am going to accept, okay? So an int length, an int width, okay? And then I will initial, <laughs> initialize my instance variable length to L to whatever value you give me and my width will be W, okay? So this is when you have a length and you have a width to create this rectangle and that's what that is. Now I can come here <laughs> and um, I can create another one, R3, and for this one, I do have a length in mind, it's 10 and three, for example. And I can create another one, right? And this is R4. And this one is uh, 10 and 10. Okay, so now when you call this method, this is the constructor. When you call this constructor, give it two parameters, it comes here. It will, L will be 10 and W will be 10, or L will be 10, W will be three based on the actual values. And your instance variable will be initialized to those values, okay? So um, these are the constructors. And then remember for a class, you must have mutators and accessors. Let's do the accessors first. Okay, accessors. And how do we do accessors? It always starts with public 
and the accessors always have return types that are the same as the instance variables. I should use it singular because it's one accessor for one instance variable. So an accessor always has the same data return type as the instance variable type. So our length type is int. So our return type here, here is int. <clears throat> And you always start with get, right? That's the uh, format, okay? The convention get followed by the um, instance variable name and you capitalize it. That's the um, convention also. It does not accept anything and you only have one statement which is give back the value of that variable. It's very easy, okay, for length, and then for width, it's an int type. So our return type is int and we use get and width, right? Okay. And then we return width, okay. So these are the two accessors and now let's do the mutators. Mutators mutate, you change, right? So it starts with public for mutators, our job is not to give back something. Our job is to change. So return type is void. And the convention is set, okay? You'll set the length. And if you want to change the length, you must know what to change to. So you must accept a parameter of the same type of the instance variable you want to change. So Suppose this is length, length variable, uh, length data type is int. So we come here and we say we will accept an int, okay? And the length. And now uh, there is a problem. If I use this variable name length, I have the same ver name for my instance variable. So if I initialize one to the other, okay, let's do this. How does the system know which is which? Which one is the instance variable? Which one is this parameter value you want to use to initialize the instance variable? You don't know. So to differentiate the two, we use this keyword, keyword this, okay. So this is a keyword. You will have explanations of this more in chapter seven, but I want to just show you this. Uh, so this is, this means the current object, okay, followed by dot and the variable name. This is the instance variable, okay. So after this, you use the instance variable and then this length is this length, the value <clears throat> that is passed to this method. So that's how that works. And when you have the same name, well, here you don't have the same name, right? It's L instead of length, so you don't need this. But if you change this to length, then once again, hmm, which is which? So what you do is you will use this to say, okay, this is the instance variable and this is the uh, parameter value, okay? So we do the same thing for length, for width, set width. <clears throat> and let's do the same thing. The reason that we use the same name is that, you know, it's the most illustrative name, right? Most de descriptive name. So uh, you have to take the time to think of another name and it takes time. And L or W really don't mean anything. So length and width are the best names. Why don't we just reuse them? But when we reuse them, we have this confusion. We don't know which is which. And that's why we use this, this to differentiate them. Okay, that's the mutator. And you also must have the two string method to describe that describes this object. Uh, the two string methods function is to return all the instance variables because that describes what an object is, right? So 
we uh, write the two string method, it always returns a string and you cannot change the signature or the return type. It always returns a string and its name is two string. You will understand this in chapter nine. So right now you just follow this and it doesn't accept anything. And as I said, a two string method returns a concatenated string of the instance variable. So uh, since it returns a string, I will just return, I will just create a, a variable, call it result. That's the one we are going to return. And you can see it says you must return something, right? So yes, I will return this. So I'm just going to say return result. Now this skeleton method actually compiles, even though it doesn't do anything. So now we will concatenate this string, okay, the instance variables. Um, so to concatenate, we will just add to result, which is an empty string right now. So we add to it, okay, result plus equal to the length. So if you want to be more illustrative, you will just say length, right? plus the actual value of length. That is the instance variable there. So whatever you set it to be, or whatever it is when you create the object, that will be the value you return, okay? And then we also want to do the um, width, and you can add a new line character and just say width plus width. That's the instance variable once again. I'm going to capitalize this, okay? And then I will return that result. That is the two string uh, method. And, and we are basically done with the basic structure of this class. Let's go to our driver and see how we can do this. Now we have the two string method. We can actually uh, see these uh, see the descriptions of these uh, variables, of these objects. So R1, and we, we can print it out. And I'm going to print out, oh, um, I'm going to print out them, okay? So this is R1, this is R2, R3, this is like the Star Wars R4, okay? So I'm going to run. And you can see uh, length, right? That's all correct. That's what we, uh, when we create them, that's what they are. So this is calling the two string method. Uh, when you use an object name in the outlines uh, output statement, the two string method is automatically called. Can you do this? Yes, is it necessary? No. Um, okay, so now other things we can do with these, we, since R1 is zero, zero, we can change it. So R1 set length, we can change it to length is 20, right? And we can do R1 <coughs> set width. So when you do this set length, set width, it comes to this class, this will be whatever I had, I think I had 20. And so your instance variable for that object, R1 will be 20 and the length will be 10. Okay, it will come back to call those methods right here because you have them. So they will use these methods to initialize, to change the instance variable. And now when you print it out, uh, you will see it's changed. Okay, let's see. Okay, so, oh, the width, did I not change the width? <laughs> so, the, okay, let's see. Oh, I said 10, right? R1. Why is it um, one, two, three, four? These are the four um, objects here. And so this one is not correct. I didn't change, it didn't change here. 
Oh, 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 oh. Okay, in my in my implementation of the rectangle class, I use length. I think you may have already noticed that. So this should be width, right? We are changing the width. Just now I use length. Now let's run. And <clears throat> this is R1 and R1 originally, that's the value now after we call um, set the x the mutators they are changed so that's one another thing is we uh, we also can call the okay this is how you test them right we can also call the uh, r3's get length let's see if that method works and uh, let's see our three's length is 10, that works. And we can do this. We can do some arithmetics here even, right? And our three dot get width, which doesn't make much sense. Oh, that's the circumference, but then not circumference. What do you call it? <laughs> and then you also have, you have to time two. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I want to show you, you can use those values to do these, right? It's 13 because length and width, that's 13. Okay, um, <clears throat> so that's that. And then you also, okay, so now uh, what is the area of this rectangle? We can do this. We can multiply the length and width. That does give you the area. Let's see. Okay, that gives you the area. But we can also simply provide that method in the class. So let's provide that method. Okay. So, um, so this is you have constructor, you have accessors, you have mutators, and then you have other methods. Okay, so the other methods, one of them is area. So we will say calculate area. Okay, so calculate area. You should, um, since you are calculating the area, you want to return that value to the user, right? So its return type is um, int because your length and width are both int. I'm going to call it calculate area. And does it need any parameters? No, because the value we want to use to calculate are both here, instance variables. So we, it accepts nothing. And you simply return the expression of the multiplication. Okay, that's it. It's, it's a very, very simple. And here uh, we can say R3, R3, area, right, <clears throat> plus, and now let's see, I think let's be safe. I don't want to test it and then come back. Let's just put a parenthesis there so that there won't be any confusions. And we can call the same thing. We can do that with instead of getting length and do the calculation ourselves, we can simply say calculate, oops, calculate area. We call that method. Okay. <clears throat> R3 dot, never forget the dot. So this will give you the area. Okay, let's see right, the method and that calculation, they do the same. So, well, instead of having the, the user to uh, do this calculation him or herself or itself, the client, the class, we have provide this method, calculate area. And this method will always give you the correct area. Why? Because we are always using the updated length and width. Whatever you change it to, you see when you change, you are changing that variable, right? So whenever you return the area, it's always the correct one. That's why we say you don't have the derived attribute area. You calculate it using the existing instance variables. Okay, that's the rectangle driver. 
and that you uh, you can see this is how you write a class and how you test it. When you test it, you call the the uh, methods. That's how you test it. Okay, I think that's it.